Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises to the Most High Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Waharuka Kodash. Yahweh is the true name of the Most High God, the one whom the world ignorantly calls Yahweh and other names. Yahweh Shai is the true name of his only begotten Son, the one whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, Yeshua, Jehovah, and other names. Chroka Kodash is the Holy Spirit that gives us the understanding of this truth. And I would like to give my double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone GMS who taught me this truth through the Spirit of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. My salutations to the hopeful elect spread around the four corners of the earth, you know, pushing this gospel in all sincerity. Shalom also to the few Aquats sisters who are sincerely seeking this truth. It's the brother Yaraya Yashar Allah from the GMS Italy camp. And I just wanted to do this lesson entitled The, the Origin of Christianity, you know, stroke the First Council of Nicaea. So without taking too much time, I'm going to start off by reading, you know, from... I actually have the Wikipedia opened, you know, on the First Council of Nicaea, but, you know... I, I like to use the, the Wayback Machine that takes me back to the first um, unedited version of this article, in which what Esau does is, you know, they add a lot of grammars, they, 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 they add a lot of things, and they play around. You need to read through almost the end to get the real understanding of what's going on. But in the older versions of the first edits, you know, they go straight to the point. So... I've taken it back to 2004 using the Wayback Machine, in which I explained how to use it on the video I did on Canaan, the language of Canaan, okay? So this is it. Let's go straight up. It says, the First Council of Nicaea, from Wikipedia, the Free Encyclopedia. It says, the First Council of Nicaea, which took place during the reign of the Emperor Constantine in 325, in which we're going to see the history of um, Emperor Constantine, in 325 was the first ecumenical, which means ecumenical from the Greek oikonomen, it says worldwide conference of bishops of the Christian church. Not worldwide, it's the known world actually, you know. And it says the participating bishops were given free travel to and fro from their episcopal sees to the council as well as lodging. It says the council also called a synod let's see what the word synod means it says an assembly of the clergy and sometimes also the laity in a diocese or the divisions of a particular church so it's an assembly it says the council also called uh let's call it assembly synod okay dealt with the problems raised by the raised by the arian Oops, what did I just do? Raised by the Arian controversy, which we're going to see that also. It says, concerning the nature of Jesus Christ, deciding against the Arians in favor of Trinitarianism. Trinitarianism, which is um, the, 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 the doctrine of the Trinity. It says, the new heresy of Arianism was causing intense controversy and Constantine wanted to bring about peace. Essentially, the, follower of, the followers of Arius said that Christ was created by God and God the Father and that there was a time when he was not. Another result of the council was an agreement by all the churches through the agreement of their bishops to celebrate Easter on the same day. As by far the most important feast of the church's life, it was thought important for all to celebrate the resurrection together. So in short words, what they did was the eldest council, you know, during the time of um, Constantine, in which Constantine is the one that actually created um, this new religion called Christianity, in which Christianity has nothing to do with, with the truth of the Bible, you know. It's a, it's a new age um, doctrine. Uh, what it does is it actually brings together all the pagan deities of the old, old times, because they had um, Trinity um, deities in the past times, 
you know, talking of Horus, talking of Isis and all these different um, worships, you know, they all go back, Zeus, you know, Apollo and all those things, they all go back to our Trinity, in which we've done, you know, various lessons on that. So what they try to do is to infuse that into the, re the religion of the, of the so-called Israelites, you know, and call it, you know, um, the religion of the day. So they rebranded it actually, because what happened was after the death of Yahweh Shai, you know, after he was crucified, you know, the truth started spreading all around the place. You know, people started getting to understand that, oh, man, that was the that was the son of the Most High. You know, and people started understanding more of the gospel. The spirit was poured out for people to see, and the powers that be in those days that actually crucified him, they didn't like that. You know. Because the powers actually were worshipping other pagan deities. So they, they started like, you know, killing these Christians. Killing the real Christians actually. In which the word um, Christian was first mentioned in the book of Acts. Is it 11 and the 26th verse, you know. And there it says the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Okay disciples of the most or of the son of the most high yahweh shai were called christians and you need to understand that the word christ you know means savior you know and that's uh, uh uh what do you call it that's uh a greek transliteration but there is a reason why they use that christian in which um christos christ i would i'll do another lesson and go into the history of that word christ okay but for now you should know that the real the real pronunciation of that word in the Hebrew is Hamashayak, okay? So they would have actually left it as either Savior or Hamashayak, but they introduced that word Christ, and which is part of, you know, adding into the word and causing confusion, adding their wicked doctrines into it, you know? So this is something, you know, you should bear in mind in which we're going to come back here. And what they did also was, you know, um, they, they added the celebration of the Easter. That's why you have the Easter today, in which the Easter actually has nothing to do with the Passover, you know. So they infused their, their wicked doctrines, their wicked um, um, philosophies, mythology of these Greek deities. They infused it with the, the original worship of the Israelites, you know, the Pasak, you know. That's why, and where is it written in the Bible where you where you offer eggs and bunnies on Easter? You know, that's the, the worship of these pagan deities. So now, let's go and get some history on, on Constantine the Great. So as you can see, this is worldhistory.org, which is, um, says it's, it's the World History Encyclopedia, you know. You can go you know to this site and be sure to get you know good history you know they put history together and in the, in the best way you can get it really it's a site i'm really impressed with you know so he says constantine the first flavius valerius constantinus was roman emperor from 306 to 335 common era and is known to history as constantine the great for his conversion to Christianity in 312 CE and his subsequent Christianization of the Roman Empire. It says his conversion was motivated in part by a vision he experienced at the Battle of Milvian Bridge in Rome in 312 CE. I'm just going to read very fast, you know. This is the Constantine's rise to power. It says during the crisis of the third century, the Roman Empire had suffered multiple difficulties through um, difficulties, drought, famine, plagues, inf inf inflation, invading barbarians. Okay, numerous Roman generals had fought over the rule of the empire, resulting in civil wars and the rule of the so called Barak emperors who were chosen and often quickly replaced by the Roman army. When the dust cleared, Emperor Diocletian, two 84 to 305 divided the empire into east and west and appointed co-emperors beneath the co-emperors he appointed caesars and augustus to delegate to delegate um, roman rule constantine's father flavius constantius was one of the caesars of the western roman empire and was later elevated to augustus diocletian then took 
the unprecedented step of retiring to his villa at split modern day Croatia in 306 CE. When Constantius and his son battled the Picts in England, Constantius was killed near York in 306 CE and the legions proclaimed Constantine Augustus on the field with the retirement of the Diocletian the next the next several years um, 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 Augustus on the field sorry with the retirement of Diocletian the next several years saw civil wars in both the east and the west over who would become the sole ruler of the empire Constantine's opposition in the west was Maxentius and their armies met near the Milvian Bridge in Rome, a bridge across the northern outskirts of the Via Flaminia. Maxentius fell into the river with his armor and drowned. Constantine became the sole ruler in the west. So, what we just read was, you know, the little biography of um, Constantine the Great, you know, how his father died in war fighting against the Picts, and he became, he became the next ruler because, um, what's his name, um, Diocletian, he, he, he retired, you know. So, um, Constantine had only one opposition who was, um, Milvian, um, sorry, Maxentius, okay. And Maxentius, you know, he died, you know, but he fell from, he fell into the river and drowned with his hammer. So, Constantine became the sole ruler in the West, okay. Now, check this out. So it says, the night before meeting at the Milvian Bridge, Constantine prayed for success in the, in the coming battle. Either in a vision or a dream, he saw an image with a script in hoc signo vinces. In this sign, con conquer. Controversy still swirled around both the event and the image that he saw. So there are two people that actually recorded, you know, the image that he saw. It says, we have two sources for the story, Eusebius 260 to 340 CE, Constantine's court bishop, and Lactanius, Lucius Caecilius Firminius in 250 to 325 CE. It says a court advisor and tutor to his son. Both these men related the story, but only years after the event, Eusebius reported that Constantine saw the sign of the cross, white lack. Tanius said it was the superimposed letter Chi and Rho, the first two letters of Christ in Greek. Whatever Constantine saw or experienced, he credited his victory to the Christian God. Now, so one said that he saw a cross, the other said that he saw the first two letters in Greek um, of Christ, that is the Chi and Rho, in which you know the word Christ, Christos, you know, comes from the Greek word Christos, okay? and it means savior but the original word in hebrew was amashayak and there is a reason why they add them they kept that crystals there in which we are going to go to, i'm going to check that um i'm going to do that lesson in a different um section probably it could be the next lesson let's see if the spirit permits me you know but the real word that's there is amashayak which means savior messiah okay so it has nothing to do with what these people did so this is actually a, a great fraud, okay, putting the word um, Christos. So the Christos that he saw actually is not referring to the Amashayak of the Hebrews, okay. It refers to Christ in Greek and we would, we would see where this word Christ comes for in, in a later lesson. So the word Kai and Ro that they said he saw was this. Cairo. That's it right there. In which I already did um, a lesson. I don't know if it was in Italian, but I did a lesson on on this. Probably it was in Italian. Okay. So that's the Kai and Ro. That's the two letters X and P put together. But some people said it was a, it was a what do you call it? It was a cross. Okay. So where do all these things have to do with, with the truth? Where is it written in the Bible that there is a sign? We're also given a commandment not to, you know, not to make any signs or whatever, you know, images and bow to them. In which now, if you go deeper into this, 
this is just it goes it goes into that word chi psi and stigma let's see well that's all totally another different lesson i don't want to shift from the main reason i'm doing this now let's go on so now you have an idea of um of what he saw the image he saw so now let's go it says we have two sources for the story we already read this it says the edict of milan although constantine is acclaimed as the first emperor to embrace christianity he was not techni technically the first to legalize it in the third century ce various generals issued local edicts of tol um, toleration in an effort to recruit christians into the legion this edict then fell by the wayside when the containers were killed in battle so well let's see if i can reduce let's make it more like this that's good so he says in the eastern empire galerius 305 to 311 ce initially had persecuted christians but reversed it through the edict of toler toleration in said in Sedica in 311 ce so what happened is you know these christians that if you read the book of um acts is 11 26 or 28 you know it tells you that the first followers of the amashayak that's the first um his apostles were first called christians in antioch okay and it was sort of a way of mocking them that the followers of you know the messiah yahawashai was mocked okay he wasn't praised you know so they called them the followers of the of the messiah okay the word would be just you know paraphrasing i don't I'm, i don't know if i'm saying it right mashayakan mashayaki okay but the followers of them are mashayak so it has nothing to do with the word christians okay so these are the real people that are actually called Christians. These are the Jews, those who were following the Israelites, you know, who, who, who started following the doctrine, you know, that were preached by the apostles. The apostles themselves they were all called Christians. So the Roman Empire of the day, they having different other gods that they follow, they persecuted these people because they didn't want that truth to spread. Just like they did to Yahweh Shai, you know, they killed Yahweh Shai because they didn't want his, uh, his truth to spread. So they were doing the same thing to his followers, you know. Now, what they did is they saw that the more that they killed these people, the more they increased in number. So they looked for a, a, a perfect way of, you know, of infiltrating this um, religion that they had, this truth that they had, and made, um, um, they they infused all the rest of other religions into it so i hope i'm making sense it says in the instant empire galerius 305 to 311 ce initially had persecuted christians which were the real followers of yahweh shai but reversed it through the edict of toleration in said in 311 ce licinius 308 to 324 ce had also persecuted christians sporadically but took the edict of galerius as a model and met with constantine in milan to unify positions so constantine wasn't the real first person to you know to to bring the old religions and turn them to christianity you know under the disguise of christianity there had also been other people who had been doing this they call it toleration edit of toleration you know so they tolerate all religions now watch this devil's man so he says the Edict of Milan was issued in 313 CE with the added stipulation that Christian property that had been confiscated or destroyed would be returned or compensated with funds. Okay, so they had confiscated um, properties from the followers of Yao Shai, you know, persecuted them for a long time, so they decided that they were going to give them back. He said the word toleration, Latin tolerantia, endurance, is often used to describe Rome's, Rome's opposition vis-a-vis -vis the numerous native courts. However, there was no official policy that was tolerated was the religious pluralism, okay, which means everyone respected the gods of the others. So you see, that's actually what they did. They didn't create, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't give them the go-ahead to do the right thing that they had to do according to the laws. 
but they, they they actually try to you know infuse everything all together and say oh you need to respect the gods of the other people you need to respect these people just like today you know so anyone can come out today and say okay i'm worshiping a, a dog or whatever it's your right just like you know, Esau is saying you know if you want to become if you're a man and you want to become a woman you can do it you know that's the same old thing that's why you know that we are actually in still the same rule of these romans you know everything is the same nothing has changed you know you only go by different names so he says roma the system of collegia okay specialized tradesmen and businessmen who met for um for shared meals under the auspices of a god or goddess to meet the group had to have permission a sort of license from the roman senate the term religio licta legal religion is often used but it was actually coined by bishop tertullian to second century ce in his petition for such a license for christian meetings you know and that's the 501 501 c3 the tax exemption license that these churches need to sign you know become before becoming a churches before opening in which you see when they do that they actually they actually need to go by the law of who is giving them the, the license the, the law of the romans you know that's why these churches will never teach you this the bible has a true history but they will only teach you as um as a religion you know which teaching you as a religion it gives you a kind of um um spiritual um laziness and you know it puts you in the same realm with the rest of other religions you know so someone else can say you know i can call jesus whatever i want i can call him this name i can call him that name in which his name is not even jesus that's how they came about the the yesus brought the, uh, this pagan zeus name and if and infused everything with christianity and says okay i can call zeus i can call him jesus jesus i can call him zeus or whatever in which his name is not jesus you know his name is yahweh shai so he says to meet the group had to have permission a sort of license from the roman senate the term religio licta legal religion is often used but it was actually coined by bishop tertullian second century ce in his petition for such a license for christian meeting meetings his petition was denied at that time he says the edict of milan now granted christians throughout the empire toleration and permission to meet in the assemblies and so legalized the movement so in the edict of um, milan in which um constantine met with um gaelos if I'm, if I'm not mistaken you know so they they actually did they permitted this um they permitted the christians that they could meet you know that's under the license okay it says christianity was now just one more of the thousand of native cults throughout the empire so you see <laughs> And this is actually a birth of a new religion. It has nothing to do with the native, you know, follower of Yahweh Shai, which was the law, you know. So it, it didn't just. Well, let's keep reading. It says religious background of Constantine. Scholars continue to debate and examine the rationale, the rationale, for Constantine's conversion to Christianity. One element involves attempts to determine the demographics of the Roman Empire, that's in 300 CE. Christianity had grown steadily since the 1st century CE and by 300 CE, there are estimates that out of a total population of 60 million, 3 million were Christians, that Jews still numbered 11 million. Okay, some contend that Constantine was smart enough to foresee the wind of change. However, Constantine may have perhaps been pre-programmed for some of his beliefs. Now, it says, during the reign of Emperor Aurelian, that was, it was before Constantine, it says, the cult of Sol Invictus, which is the worship of the sun, it says, the invisible unconquered sun. Okay, that's the worship of the sun. It says, that's the sun, S-U-N, was promoted as his family cult. This cult also embodied the concept of Jupiter, Apollo, and Helios. That's the trinity that they actually want to infuse, they, they, that they actually infused into Christianity, in which Christianity has nothing to do with the trinity. The Most High Yahweh is a different entity. His son, Yahweh Shai, is a different entity. And the Holy Spirit is, is, um, is the spirit of truth, you know? You know? 
is the spirit of truth. But what they try to do is to tell you that um, the Most High came on earth as man. You know? They say he's a trinity. He's the same person. They try to say that Yahweh Shai is the same person as the Father, in which that's not what it is, you know? And that's what they actually did in that, um, in that um, Council of Nicaea, in which we're still going to read about it. It says, Sol Invictus merged with another popular military cult, that of Mithras, Okay, excuse me. He says at the, at that at the same time, Aurelian also reorganized imperial finances and regulated imports and the price of food throughout the provinces. His idea may be summarized as one god, one empire. <laughs> you see, so what they were trying to do is one god, one empire. That's what Aurelian did, and in at the end of the day, that's what um, Constantine actually embraced. It says Constantinus, Constantius, and his son Constantine were both members of the cult of Sol Invictus. Okay, so that was the the the, the religion of Constantine. Actually, he was worshiping that Trinity deity of the of the Roman of the Greco Romans. You know, the sun god and other other bullshit. You know, so Constantine was mostly likely exposed to Christian teachings in his travel with his father. It was reported that he helped some Christians receive compensation for damaged property near Trier before his conversion. He also spent time and received his education in various imperial courts, particularly under Diocletian. We cannot confirm if his mother, Helena, was a Christian because before her son's conversion, such details are only found in later legendary story of R. A committed Christian, that's a question says many books of constantine continue to debate constantine's commitment as a christian criticism of constantine's conversion involves the following elements so the reason why constantine actually tried to do that conversion these are the reason listen what i says he says the edict of milan legalized christians but left all the native cults in place so they legalized christian uh, christianity but all the other native cults were in place and what they do was to infuse it into christianity it says the ark of constantine erected in 315 ce near the colosseum lacks christian symbols and contains sculptures of offerings to apollo diana and Hercules. so he never changed to christianity he continues to offer his sacrifices to these deities that is the trinity the trinity demonic deities so he says constantine issued coins with himself in the figure of soul invictus and helios you know that's the sun worship constantine was not baptized as a christian until he was on his deathbed <laughs> so whether any of the abo above points can be interpreted as a lack of commitment is debated constantine inherited a vast empire where he expected where he expected loyalty from all citizens he could not abruptly eliminate, eliminate the old roman religion the traditions of the ancestors which were incorporated into daily life it says the native courts would not be outlawed until the edict of theodosius first in 381 century in which what they did in that um in that edict of theodosius was to to solidify this um pagan worship and make it real this christianity you know so he says the triumph the triumphal ark of constantine was commissioned by the roman senate in 315 ce to celebrate his victory over maxentius scholars debate if the ark was built utilizing other arches of trajan adrian and marcus aurelius to explain the incorporation of these symbols we do not know how many christians were in the senate at that time but the senate was always a conservative body we know that the ark of triumph was actually the first one if i'm not mistaken was erected um for for titus you know after he destroyed um jerusalem in 70 a.d and you know they took all the riches from jerusalem so you know they're doing the same thing for constantine you know it had to do with something about the hebrews when they when they conquer the hebrew in some ways they always erect something so in this way constantine was his his work was to 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 destroy the the hebrews the so-called the israelites 
his work was to destroy them spiritually you know infuse their doctrine with the doctrines of men so he says all emperors promoted their family cults on their coins however we ceased to find such coins after 319 ce for unknown reasons in 321 ce constantine forbid christians to make offering at native temples so <laughs> he's saying okay i'm trying to create christianity but he's refusing them to go make their their sacrifices as they've always done in their native temples okay in reorganizing physical policy he had many of the native statues melted down to mint new coins he says the most debated topic of constantine conversion is his baptism given the civil war that were rampant in his period the best explanation is that constantine knew that as emperor he was going to have a blood on his hand he was going to have blood on his hand in this sense it was quite typical he executed one of his wives and his sons possibly because of rumors of sexual immorality waiting waiting to the very end to have your sins forgiven made perfect sense in this world despite the delay of baptism throughout his reign constantine was quite open about his christian conviction in letters and speeches okay Anyway, Constantine was a Jake. He was an Israelite, you should know, you know. He was a Jake, but he was one of those devils, actually. Those Jake devils, you know, as written, as I said, as written in the in the first book of Maccabees, you know, that that they embraced the, the, the Greek, the Hellenistic, you know, ways of life, you know. They did the bidding of the of the of the Hellens, of, of the Greeks, you know. They didn't do the bidding of the of the most high Yahweh Shemi al Shai. And that's why the most high actually took that that's um that's um empire from their hand you know because jake got into power and what they do from time in time is to do more evil than the rest just like the king um is he what's his name is he um i can't remember his name you know that took down the edomites he took down the edomites he, he killed these edomites you know throwing them from mountains and busting their heads on the on, on the rocks you know and he turned back and started worshiping the deities of of the of the <laughs> of the Edomites. <laughs> That's just what you know. These people are actually doing. This is the same kind of spirit, you know, that came on on Constantine. It says, it says, while native cults and traditions remained, Constantine favored Christians both financially and theologically, in which that's what they do to these churches, you know. This um that the the government they favor these churches you know they exempt them from taxes as long as they keep pushing that watered down doctrine and deceiving the mass, you know. It says as their supreme patron Constantine endowed Christians with funds to build their basilicas to acquire properties, return confiscated properties, named Christians to high rank offices, and you see they built all these basilicas which is all these um. All these cathedrals, all these big cathedrals, which has nothing to do with the scriptures, you know. <laughs> Our bodies are actually the the, the temple of Most High Yahweh Shemi Al Shai. But what they were doing was to promote their 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 temples for their for their deities, you know. These Romans, you know, they had temples in which they erected for their deities. So that was what they were actually pushing with the name of the Christians, you know. It says um. And to acquire properties, return confiscated properties, named Christians to high-ranking offices, and exempted Christian clergy from taxes. So this was okay to those um, wicked pastors who were ruling the Israelites. You know, they had they were tax exempt. You know, they were getting all different kinds of favor from the government and all these things. So as long as they push the will of of the government, they were okay. You know. That's why we're told, you know, to, to seek of, of what's gone in the past, you know. We should study to show ourselves approved. It says, in theological support, his opposition as head of the church, as well as the empire contributed to imperial dictates that promoted Christianity, Christian unity of belief. It says, during the persecution against Christian under Diocletian in 302 to 306, that was another wicked Jake, says in addition to arrest the emperor had ordered christian clergy to hand over their sacred texts to avoid imprisonment and the arenas some including bishops 
had done so. Divisions had grown among the Christian communities and one group led by... You see, so what they did, you know, they were persecuting these followers of Yahweh Shai. That's why the doctrine actually got lost, you know. This doctrine got lost again that they were learning. But the doctrine actually got lost at 70 AD, you know. That was the great, um, um, the great, the great fall, you know, when they were pushed to all different parts of the world. In 70 AD, they lost all this, all this doctrine, you know. They had only different fragments of the truth, and you know, certain people kept the truth, you know. So, and these Romans were actually still persecuting them, you know. So it says division had grown among the Christian communities, and one group led, and one group led by Bishop Donatus, was adamant that these bishops were now defiled. The bishops petitioned Constantine to act as a medi med mediator in this problem. So you can see, they created this division. He it says, it says, divide and conquer. That has always been, you know, the, the way of the Romans to act. You know, they divided. Now, this, this Christian now go back to call the devil that actually caused this division to come help them sort the problem. So that was a way of him coming in and saying, okay, I'm taking all laws into my hand. I'm running everything now. So what I say is what you do. I'll check this out. It says, the bishops, the bishops petitioned Constantine to act as a mediator in this problem. After so many civil wars, Constantine was determined to instill unity throughout the Roman Empire and order the policy of forgive and forget. <laughs> Bishop Donatus refused and his followers settled in North Africa where they clashed with the Augustine of Ipo 100 years later. But issuing the order, Constantine effectively became the official head of the church. This mirrored Augustus in 27 BCE and 14 CE. So <laughs> Constantine became the real head of the, of the church, you know. That's all totally pagan shit, man. Going back to to um to julius augustus you know going back to augustus sorry in 27 bce so when he combined the position of pontifex maximus the head of roman religion with his role as first citizen in 324 ce constantine defeated licinius and became the sole emperor in that position he essentially expanded the idea of aurelian in that he could now enforce one god one emperor, one church. And that's that's what these people are pushing. And that agenda is, you know, it doesn't matter what you worship. You know, whatever you worship is still the same. If you believe in in the Jesus that's written in the Bible, in Islam is this one, in in, in Buddhism is this, you know, they, they bring all the religion as one. And that's what Nimrod actually did, you know, in which we're going to get some scriptures because we are told not to be part of this this world you know we're not we're told not to be part of this world you know where we are set aside people we have a certain doctrine we have laws and statues and what these people follow is a uh, different dogmas you know they don't follow the laws and statues of the most high yahaba shimmy shai so he says in that position he essentially expanded the idea of aurelian one god one emperor one church so now this is the first council of nicaea he says after meditating they don't the Donatist schism, what's this? After mediating the Donatim schism, division, hmm. it says a member of a schismatic Christian group in North Africa. Okay, those were the people that actually, you know, that didn't accept and went down to North Africa. It says, after mediating the Donatist schism, his next major challenge came in 325 CE, a presbyter, a presbyter in Alexandria, Arios, had been teaching that at one point God had created Christ. Riots had broken out in several cities and Constantine brought the bishop together at the city of Nicaea to resolve the issue. So, out of those people that broke, there was one called Aria, Arios. Okay, he was called Arius, okay, and his point was actually the truth. He said the Most High created the Son, so the Most High and the Son are not the same. 
But these Romans, they were all trying to push that agenda that the Most High and the Son are the same person. That the Son came in flesh, which is, is still the Most High. They, they're trying to make them one person, in which Arius was trying to put out the point that no, this is not the truth. The truth is the Most High is a different being and the Son is a different being. And what did they do? They demonized him, they banished him, they called him an heretic. You know, and anyone that follows is this thing, they were all persecuted. So you see, this is how these devils, they walk. And that's how they presented this Christianity to you today, you know. So he says, Arius had been teaching that at some point, God had created Christ. Riots had broken out in several cities and Constantine brought the bishops together at the city of Nicaea to resolve the issue. The council of Nicaea resulted in a Christian doctrine known as the Trinity, it says the Council of Nicaea resulted in a Christian doctrine known as the Trinity. So today now, they believe in this Trinity that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You know, that Trinity crap, which is not, it's not found in the Bible at all, you know, is something they actually brought from the ancient Roman worship, okay? When they worship Apollo, Jupiter, and Zeus, and all that crap. You know the trinity they infused it into christianity so that's why they held that council of nicaea you know it says the council of nicaea resulted in a christian doctrine known as trinity which articulated the relationship between god and christ the council voted to claim that christ was of the identical essence of god present at creation and manifest incarnated on earth in jesus of nazareth until Christ returned, the now Christian emperor stands in for Christ. So now they say until, so they say um, God is the same as Christ, okay? So he came on earth and um, yeah, he was incarnated as, 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 as Christ, you know? So they are the same people. So he says now that he's gone until his return, that the Christian emperors... Those are the popes and all these people that they put there, the leaders of the church. They stand in for Christ. <laughs> so they represent Christ. That's what they're trying to tell you. And that's why you have all these popes and all these um, pontifios and all these crazy things, you know. They say they call them fathers in which we're told not to call anybody father except the most high Yahweh Shemi Al Shai, you know. So just check out all the, this Christian crap came up. You say, until Christ return, the now Christian emperor stands in for Christ and so carries the identical power of God on earth as he rules. And that's heresy, you know. That's, really, that's the real heresy, actually, but they push it as the truth. It says, it was after this council that Christian emperors began to be portrayed with hollows over their heads and the trapping of divine worship. So after that council, after that council, they started portraying these people with all this round thing around their head that's why they they they, they, they whenever you see the picture of a of a, of a, of a so-called saint a, a pope or whatever they will have this round hollow thing around their head also the image of the so-called um jesus you know this round thing around his head that's the hollow that's when they they created this this thing in the council of nicaea in which this is not his image this is the image of caesar borgia the son of the sixth pope you can see it around thing it's in this council of Nicaea that it came around that thing. So what they did is they made themselves gods on earth. You know, they made themselves, they, they, they turned themselves to be to the gods to be worshipped. You know, that's why people go to all these churches. They confess to their pastors, which man, you're, you're, you're meant to confess your sins to the Most High Yahweh Hashem Shai. Pray, then you can speak to all different brothers, you know, about, about some errors that you've gone, you know, in order to edify them not to go into the same errors you know that's a different thing we should confess to ourselves you know but we're not going to confess to all these men that are putting themselves in the place of the most high we know that in order to get remission of sin we need to revolt ourselves to the son of the most high which is Yahweh shai you know who is under his father yahawah you know he is the intercessor he is the mediator between man and the most high so now what they do is they take his place you know so it says the concept of of a creed from latino credo io believe i believe was a christian innovation with multiple native cults 
there was no central authority that dictated what all should believe. The Nicene Creed formalized one system of belief that was promoted through the power of the emperor. As such, as dissent was not only heresy but only also treason. Okay, you say anyone that goes against that, you know, was not only committing um, heresy but also treason. And it says the Council of Nicaea also sets the date for the empire wide celebration of Easter. Some communities had insisted on following the gospel tradition of observance during the Jewish Passover, Constantine allegedly wrote. So you see, they actually now, they now turned the Passover, they turned it to a different thing, you know, to the worship of their deity. That's why they had to later, you know, shuffle off the, the, the calendar and turn it all around, you know. Now he says, this is what Constantine says, he says, It appeared an unworthy thing that in the celebration of this most holy feast, we should follow the practice of the Jews who have impiously defiled their hands with animal sins and are therefore deservedly afflicted with blindness of soul. So you see, he says the Jews, <laughs> they are not worthy. We can't follow their, 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 their stuff, you know. We can't follow their, we can't practice the, the, um, this feast of the Jews, you know. So this is plainly telling you, Constantine never followed the laws, never followed the scriptures, though he was a, he was a jake, but he was a devil actually. It was one of those wicked jakes, you know. He never followed the scriptures. So, and he also put, he put away the scriptures, you know. He put away the truth, you know. He says, therefore, deservedly afflicted with blindness of soul. He said the Jews were afflicted with blindness of souls. So, we can't, you know, we can't, it is unworthy to celebrate that day, you know, uh, to follow the, the Jewish, uh, the practice of the Jews. So, he says, let us then have nothing in common with the detestable Jewish crowd. For we have received from our Savior a different way. And that Savior is calling us, is a different Savior. Because any Savior that comes and teaches you something that's not what's in the scripture, teaches heresy and teaches something else that's not, that's not, it has nothing to do with the truth. You know? So it says, Constantine elected the practice which churches in Rome followed. The first Sunday after the first full moon following the spring solstice, the later law codes under Theodos, um, Theodosius, okay, of in 379 to 395 CE, and Justinian claimed that Constantine also created legislation against the Jews. Jews could not seek converts, were forbidden to their own Christian slaves, and could not circumcise their slaves. Christians who converted to Judaism were to receive the death penalty. So this new, uh, this new religion that they created, that they called Christianism, okay, you know. So if you accept that Christianism, if you convert back to the true worship of 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 the, of the scripture of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, that's what they call in Judaism then. But Judaism of today has nothing to do with the truth. You know, the Khazarians have infiltrated this thing. That's why you really need the spirit of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai to open your eyes to understand these things, you know. So it says, um, we received, received the death penalty. On the other hand, Jewish clergy were offered the same tax exemptions as Christians, you know. So they also bribed those, um, those who are supposed to be the rabbis of the day. They were bribed also to keep the people asleep. No. So it says Constantine is often credited with determining the date for Christmas too, although no edict was so, or has survived. Christians in Rome celebrate the event during the festival of Saturnalia in December 25. So the 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 the, the Romans <laughs> the Romans celebrated a festival of Saturnalia, in which if you go to Saturnalia, it's a it's a, it's a demon worship actually. You know, in December 25. So what they did, it says, this 25 December was also the birthday of Sol Invictus and Mithras. That's the deities that Constantine worshipped and may have been utilized in attempt to unify these festivals. So what they did, they unified all these things and they just gave it a new name. It's a new rebranding. Okay. <laughs> 
says from an ancient calendar we know that in the year 336 ce at least in rome the celebration was established on 25th december says the first 300 years of christianity were dominated by the existence of multiple communities that articulated their beliefs in various ways until constantine there uh, until constantine there was no central authority to de- determine dogma and ritual in the second century the writing of church father reproduced what eventually became christian dogma many of these ideas are evident in constantine's letters and speech the same church fathers had invented the concept of orthodoxy correct belief against other views which were considered heresy so they they actually created all these churches and all those things and if you don't believe and follow what they actually call to be the um, the correct doctrine that was an heresy was considered an heresy so under constantine heresy was defined in relation to their earlier christian views the property of heretics was confiscated and their execution was by burning on at the stake you know <laughs> which it says the church father had determined that only the gospel of mark matthew luke and john con- john contained the correct teachings can you imagine so the <laughs> man these people are devils man and these christians if they are not if they are not um if they are not you know going back to the history of christianity i'm not going to read any longer because it's too long you can go read by yourself if i remember i might put the link in the in the in the description box but if you go to the to the website you know worldhistory.org no go go study these things for yourself man this is this is what it says in the book of second timothy is it 2 16 or 15 study to show thyself approved man so now let's get some more scriptures because you know all these things i'm just showing you to let you know that christianity has nothing to do this modern day christianity has nothing to do with the truth you know it's all pagan worship infused now this is the book of romans what they try to do is to make one one worship one um i don't have the words what they try to do is to to create a new religion and put everyone into that same this thing you know well in which you know we are set aside you know we have we have a doctrine in which the most High has given us to follow you know and that doctrine is is the same because the most High yahweh shemi al shai is the same yesterday today and forever you know it never changes so no man can come and change things and say okay you do it like now we're changing it this is a better date this is a better date. this is for, you know that's all heresy you know this is the book of romans chapter 12 verse 2 he says and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the most high Yahweh Shem Shai. And how do you prove what is good and acceptable? You know, through the book, through his laws and statutes, through the scriptures, you know. It's not what another man is telling you that this is the religion and this is what you have to follow. You need to go through the book yourself, you know. Let's get on now. This is the book of Ezra. Um, 10, 11. No, not Ezekiel. This is the book of Ezra. 10 11 it says now therefore make confession unto the lord yahweh shem yahushai power of your fathers and do his pleasure and separate yourself from the people of the land okay we are meant to be a separate people we're meant to separate ourselves from the people of this land okay the people of the land will find ourselves because this doctrine that they push into you are not the doctrine of the most high these are doctrines of men these are philosophies and, and, and mythologies and different myths that does nothing good to you but leads you to the path of death, you know? This is the book of Exodus. Um, Exodus 23, 2. The book of Exodus chapter 23, verse 2 says... Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after 
many to rest to rest judgment says thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil because what these people do in these religions they are actually doing evil evil is um sin is going against the command and is the transgression of the law you know these churches these religions they tell you okay it's okay to do this it's okay to do that but the scripture says otherwise you know you shouldn't be following this multitude to do this evil because you know in this truth this truth is not something it's not something that you know people are really going to love and people are really going to follow you know but you know jake is carried away you know crowd mentality you know what the crowd follows that's what jake follows you know now they, they, they'll, they'll deceive you on the news and tell you that lots of people are getting juiced up you know so jake be like oh lots majority are getting juiced up so i go and get juiced up too you know this is the book of deuteronomy um 18 19 no can this is the book of deuteronomy 18 9 it says when thou art come into the land which the lord jehovah shimiah shai that power giveth thee that shall not learn to do after the abomination of those nations you know what we are actually doing is the abomination of those nations you need to come out of this um religions you need to come out of these religions, you know? Because these religions are not going to lead you to any way of life. They're going to lead you to death, man. Romans. Romans 7, 12. It says, Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandments holy, and just, and good. The law is holy. The commandment is holy. You don't need any man to come to amend it. You don't need anyone to come to change it, you know? You don't need anyone to tell you, oh, no, this is called, there, is a, there is something to be corrected here. We don't need to follow this day, but follow that way or follow the other day. And it says, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. So that's why we need... We need um, Yahweh Shai to return to give us those perfect bodies, you know. But you need to follow these laws to the best of your abilities, you know. These laws are not done away with, you know. And it says, For I delight in the law of Yahweh power after the inward man. This is what your delight should be. Your delight shouldn't be according to, according to um, religion or whatever christianity or what your pastor tells you your your delight should be in the law you know these laws are pure that's the um book of psalm nineteen um seven it says the law of the lord yahabah shem yahushai is perfect converting the soul the testimony of the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahushai is sure, making wise the simple. Okay, so that's why your government, all these people, they push these churches to you. They bought all these churches actually. These churches are actually in their pockets. Before they open, they need a license called the 501c3, which goes back to all those times of Constantine, you know. So these pastors, they get, you know, special exemptions from the government and all this in order not to teach you the truth the way it meant to be you know they need to they all need to go through one same law that's why they have this um seminary schools where they teach pastors to become pastors and all those things it's the holy spirit that teaches you know <laughs> it says the status of the lord yahweh shem yahushai are right rejoice in the heart the commandments of the lord yahweh shem yahushai is pure enlightening the eyes the fear of the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, are truth and righteous altogether. You know? So you don't need to go to all these priests, you know, to confess your sins to them so they can pray for you. 
you know, you have you have a mediator. The mediator is Yahweh Shai. You know, you don't need these pastors to do all these things for you. These are just men like you, man, fighting in the flesh. I saw a video um, in our in our in our group chat. A brother sent a video yesterday, and it was it was a priest, an Italian priest. You know, he was sniffing cocaine. You, you know. And people were just, someone was videoing him, you know, from, from the hole in, in, in the window. He didn't know. And he had, he had his garment on and everything, you know. <laughs> Verse 10, it says, more to be desired. It says, the fear of the Lord is clean. Enduring forever, the judgment of the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Shai, are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are day than gold. Yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. So, hey, you know, these laws are not done away with. These laws are actually there. We're not meant to follow a multitude to do wickedness. We're not meant to join these religions or whatever. We are just meant to stick to this truth, which is these laws, statutes, and commandments that are given to us, you know, because we are going to be judged according to this book, man, you know. Christianity, Islam, and all that new age crap and the rest of religions, they're not going to help you, man. That's why you need to come out of religion. These religions are man-made. All you need to do is to go back into history and check these things out, man. Study to show thyself approved, man. This is the book of John. Um, 17. 16. This is the book of John 17, 16. It says, They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. You know? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Hey, we're not meant to be part of the world. Constantine tried to unite the old, the old religions, reunite the old all these things, you know, and put, bring come up with a new refined doctrine, you know change the day the holy days you know tell you that oh no easter is not easter we should do it all together you know give you a new date of the the, the, the date of of the birth of this pagan deities mitras and the soul whatever the sun god is 25th of um, december they infused that into christianity as the date of birth of of jesus you know which Jesus, as I said, is a is a is a is a is a demonic name, man. It has nothing to do with the truth. Just check out the video I did last, you know. The letter J never even came to existence until 1524 by a man named Jean, Jean Tricino, you know. So how can his name be Jesus? You know, we are not. He says we are we are not meant to be of this world, man. We are a separate people, and these people are definitely going to hate us. They're not going to love us, you know. This is John fifteen. I have two more precepts, and I'll close. This is John fifteen. Nineteen. It says, "If ye were of the world, the world would love his own, but." Because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. You know? So if you're being loved by everybody, you're going around, church this and that, you're the best in the church. You know, everybody wants to be around you and all these things, you know? Your church, you know, you're, you're, you're well favored, everyone loves you. This one, You should check yourself, man. Because the Bible says otherwise, you know. Because truly this doctrine, once you come into this doctrine and you start teaching these words, people are going to look at you crazy, you know. First is going to be your family. They'll be like, man, what's wrong with this dude, man? Because this, this doctrine that we teach, it sounds, it sounds different because they are, they've been brainwashed all from the time of um, Constantine, you know. They've, they've actually been drinking that Babylon juice, you know, that refined Christianity, which has nothing to do with the truth. So when you hear the truth, it sounds strange to you. 
when someone tells you oh his name is not jesus and he's a black is a so-called black man you know all these things don't they don't they don't they don't vibrate well with your spirit you know because you're used to all that crap you know when someone tells you that you start looking at that person you know strange and this is what it is man this truth is not something that it's that pleasing to hear in the ears man it's not pleasing to the ears you know but we are told to seek these things that are pleasing unto the most high Yahweh Hashem as it is written in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter five verse ten. It says, "We should prove what is acceptable unto the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. and it says, "And have no fellowship with the unfaithful work of darkness." but rather reprove them so hey if you're still holding strong to this religion of christianity and you're in for a rude awakening you better give up that shit right now before it's too late you know there is no time the return of the messiah is very close this time around is not coming to die for your sins again he already did that two thousand years ago this time is coming to kill and destroy you people man you know the fear of the most high yahweh bashem yahusha is the beginning of wisdom if you don't fear the most high man i'm sorry for you man the fear of the most high actually got me out of that religion the church you know the fear of the most high yahweh bashem yahusha brought me out of all that crap man so hey we need to stop here i think this lesson is very long I hope it's edifying to the spirit and I would like to give all praises to the most high Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Waharu Kakwadash, my double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom.